Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Oxenfree for the Nintendo Switch. And apparently I had actually downloaded Oxenfree about a year ago but never played it because it just got swept away in my endless backlog of games. But, I mean, I'm kind of happy I did because it's the perfect start to this halloween -y month. And so for the rest of the month of October, the Budget Gamer channel is going to be exclusively focusing on spooky games. Like horror survival titles, mystery, or anything dealing with paranormal, psychological, or supernatural kind of themes. And so Oxenfree could not be a better start to the month. I mean, if you know nothing about it, and because the story is so catastrophically mind-blowing, I can't really get into a lot of the story, but if you imagine an adventure novel written by H.G. Wells and illustrated by M.C. Escher, you're probably going to get kind of close. Pretty much you'll be playing as Alex, who is one of a group of teenagers who are deciding to go and have probably their final hurrah of their teenage years out getting lit and drinking on a beach. But as it turns out with most Scooby-Doo style adventure mysteries, they kind of stumble into something a little bit bigger than themselves. Starting off with the actual gameplay though, we're dumped into something that seems to be almost equal parts adventure, point and click, and walking sim. And so while the mystery and story behind the game will definitely keep your interest peak, the actual physical progression of the game is, uh, is a little bit more relaxed. More or less, you'll be interacting with your friends group, which is composed of several pretty dynamic archetypes, such as the antagonist, the outsider, you as the main protagonist, the longtime friend and comically harmless character, as well as the kind of quiet wallflower. But while many games with a fairly rich story and interactive dialogue will just kind of have you working your way through decision trees and conversations, the way Oxenfree works is a little bit different. While you're walking around and doing very, very light platforming, such as walking on trails and climbing or jumping off short cliffs, you'll be interacting with each and every character in the game, given the scenario and certain choices you may have made, with essentially four different conversational options. With the A, X, and Y buttons, you'll be able to pick one of three options or completely abstain from making a comment at all. And while some of these character interactions are dynamically tied to the story and therefore won't have much impact as far as spreading you off of the main branching path, certain decisions you can make will fundamentally affect how the game plays out. You may make decisions that cause you to play through a certain portion of the game with a different character at your side, or engage in or possibly completely avoid certain situations to set you up for different experiences as you play through the game. So even despite uncovering the mystery of the island, if you manage to do so, there's still going to be a healthy amount of replay value in Oxenfree itself. But don't kid yourself, this isn't just an angst-ridden Nintendo Switch version of The Breakfast Club. While you're exploring this island and interacting with your peers and friends, you'll also be making use of one of the game's largest dynamics, which is a small handheld radio you come to the island with. And it just so happens that, as with every great urban legend, there's a mysterious cave that if you do a certain thing at a certain location, a weird thing happens. And as it turns out, dialing in two specific frequencies on your small handheld radio at specific sites on the island does cause something very strange to happen. And despite knowing what curiosity does to cats, you and your group of friends fool around just a little too much and are forced to confront this urban legend head on. And that is as far as I'm going to go with the story. So moving on to the game's visuals, it is a beautiful game with watercolor details that are really reminiscent of like childhood storybooks from the late 90s, early 2000s. Albeit with a much darker tone, as if where the wild things were was not a place you should be going. And as you may have guessed just from the tone of the review so far, the musical package is on point. Not only is the entire game full of professional voiceovers for every single piece of dialogue by every single character through the duration of the game, but the thematic sounds and sound effects not only keep you kind of soaked in this angsty adventure, but do a great job really dialing it in strong with crazy supernatural sound effects when the weird stuff starts really hitting the fan. But all that being said, there are a couple of things about Oxenfree that a player might want to note before diving in. And first and foremost is probably the pace of the game. Since moment one of the review, I have been praising the story unabashedly, because honestly, I like mystery spooky stuff. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of my thing. 
But while I do love stories and slow immersive progressions in walking sims, the two don't seem to be perfectly aligned. And that's not because the game doesn't work out or not because it's a bad blending or anything. It's just because when you get really involved in something creepy spooky, all you want as a player is to know the next bit of information. But as all of your characters have an uncontrollably passive walking speed and you will have to navigate across large sections of map, there are certain points in the game that feel like they've been drawn out just a little too much for such a intensely paced story. Other than that though, and this is definitely going to be a massive positive for some gamers and a massive con for others, if you are a one and done gamer, if you like to play a game, check it off the list and then put it away and never think about it again, Oxenfree is not that type of game. As I kind of alluded to in the review, you might uncover the mystery after beating the game. And that is if you did everything absolutely correctly, which I'm not even certain you can do in your first playthrough. So you likely will need to play it again if you really want to understand what's going on or try and get what you might consider to be the best ending. Because as you play through the first time, you're not going to be aware that some things are intrinsically important or even that certain things are happening. Which to me is flippin' awesome. And yes, I, I have dove back into it and I probably will play it a third and a fourth time. And if you really want to get a handle on what exactly is going on, or what exactly you even did in your first playthrough, you probably will too. But one other definable critique of the game is in its graphic imagery. The art and the design in Oxenfree are absolutely beautiful, and I've already said that. But if you're playing it in handheld mode, it might be difficult to read text, or when you're in a gaggle with your other characters, even determine which character you are, because they are going to be absolutely tiny. But if you're playing it in docked mode on a TV, it's, it's going to be like watching a gorgeous cinematic adventure. So if your only opportunity to play Oxenfree is in handheld mode, be ready to invest in some reading glasses. So taking a step back and looking at Oxenfree as a whole, if you are a gamer who is driven by the mystery and the story, this is going to be a title for you. But for anyone who's more driven by the fast-paced action combat of intensely technical platformers, twin stick shooters or hack and slash games, you will definitely find the pace to be a little bit slow. Not saying you won't enjoy it, but while it is exciting, it's definitely not action packed. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Oxenfree now on the Nintendo Switch as our first game in our October's spooky month of indie gaming. So if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw us a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, and there are thousands on the eShop. So whether it's an easy hard pass or an unforgettable gem, chances are if it's on the eShop, you're going to find out about it right here. But anyway, this has been the Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.